Happy Vlogmas, Vlogmas Day 15, 15 everybody. everybody. Today we're back again. You know us. I promised we'd be back every day with a video. Since we have a contest that's going to be ending in about 57 minutes, um, we're hoping that we might get a couple of extra entries into that. But whoever wins, as a part of their prize, will get a little bit of the fudge that we're making here tonight. This is another one of the recipes that belonged to my mom. My family has made this fudge for over 50 years. It was my grandma's, then my mom's, and since I'm the only girl in the family, the fudge recipe went to me, and I'm sharing it with you guys. This is going to be my peanut butter fudge. It's going to be cooked on the stove, and we're not going to do a softball test, and we're not going to need a candy thermometer if you guys follow along with me and my instructions, you will make the perfect fudge. You won't have to worry about whether it's going to set up or not. You don't have to fuss with those kitchen gadgets or doing the softball test. We're just going to make some really perfect, easy fudge. So what you're going to need for this is you're going to need three cups of granulated sugar, which I've got my sugar here. You're going to need three quarters of a cup of margarine or butter. It doesn't matter, you can use margarine in the stick or butter because I know margarine is cheaper and a lot of people are having a difficult time financially right now. So you can use a stick and a half of margarine. And it tastes the same. Yeah, it will taste the same. Um, you're going to need two-thirds cups of evaporated milk, not sweet and condensed, but evaporated milk. You're going to need one seven-ounce jar of marshmallow cream. And you see I already have the top popped and... Got my spoon in there to get ready to um, add that when it's time. And we're going to need a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're going to need four heaping tablespoons of peanut butter, which I have my spoon in my peanut butter already and ready to go too. You're going to need a heavy saucepan or a, a heavy pan, which I'm bringing out my chicken fryer. You need a small cookie sheet and some parchment paper and either some spray or some butter to put on the parchment paper before we pour the fudge down so that it doesn't stick and it's easy to remove. So I'm going to get ready to get my ingredients ready. I'm going to give the camera to the chef for him to man the camera. And we're going to make us some yummy fudge. Okay, I've got my parchment paper down on my cookie sheet. And I've sprayed it lightly with, um, with cooking spray. And I just took a napkin and just kind of spread it around to the bottom and the sides. So we're going to get our ingredients in the pan. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we got our chicken fryer here. We're going to take three cups of sugar. You want three level cups of granulated sugar. One. I'm going to have to get a sugar refill before long. Two. We've been making a lot of sweets lately. We've got about 20 pounds of sugar in, up in the cabinet. Yeah. That's just a little shy of three. So I'm going to put that in and grab me just a little bit more. That makes my three cups of sugar. Now we're going to need two-thirds cups of evaporated milk. And I don't know if you guys have ever used them or not, but we bought one of those. Safety Can Express, I think is the advertisement on TV, where it cuts the can a different way. And I absolutely love that can opener. Yep. It just makes things so much better. It keeps it from having sharp edges around. It and, works great. Yeah, and if you need to put the lid back on it for whatever reason, you can. It'll fit right back on it. I even did it one with a dented lid, uh, dented lid and it worked. Yeah. we Wayfair had a cyber sale going on, so we ordered one off of Wayfair. And it we was, really like it. Yeah, it was about $7 cheaper than the one they advertised on TV. Okay, we're going to need two-thirds cups of evaporated milk. So this is my one-third cup measuring spoon. So my hand's in the way I know. There's one-third cup. Two-thirds cups of evaporated milk. We need that in there. And see, I can take this lid, put it right back on the can, and seal it down. And put it right back in the refrigerator like that. Yep. Okay, and the last thing we're going to add into this right now is butter. So I'm going to take all my butter here, and I'm just going to cut it into pieces and stick it in here so it'll melt easier. 
So I'm not going to bore you with this. Uh, we'll be back when this is done. All right, now we have all of our stuff in the pan and we're at the stove. Now this is the part where you need to really pay close attention. At first, I'm going to put my burner on. Here is high. I'm going to put my burner up one notch from high. That's what we're going to start it on. And I'm just going to mix everything up. You want to make sure that you get your sugar and everything mixed before your pan gets too hot. Because if not, the sugar will crystallize on the bottom of your pan. And you don't want pieces of crystallized sugar in your fudge. You want to have a nice, smooth, creamy fudge. And if you follow what I'm doing here, I guarantee you that you will have a nice, smooth, creamy fudge. Probably one of the best fudges that you've ever tasted. So, Not, not to change the subject, but it smells so good in here because she's got a pan of oranges and cinnamon and something else going in Cloves. Here. Cloves. It smells like Christmas in here. Yeah. I used to do that all the time, and I forgot about it, and I saw somebody else in a video. They had a pan of um, oranges and cinnamon on their stove, and I thought, well, I even left a comment saying, yeah, I used to do that too, but I'd add cloves to mine. So that's what I did this evening, Just uh, and it makes your whole house smell like Christmas. We had a couple of oranges that were just kind of too tough to eat. So, make good use for it. And there I go saying so again. You gotta stop me, Chef. No. Don't let me keep saying that. No. Anyway, Look I know that. this is... <laughs> this is kind of a little bit tedious, but you have to pretty much stir constantly while you're doing this. And that's the key to getting a creamy fudge is the constant stirring. So, we're gonna let this get melted down. And we want to bring it to a boil. Once we bring it to a boil, we're going to turn the burner down a little bit. And I'll show you what I turn it down to. And then we're going to time it. That's the whole thing with this one. We're going to time this out. So I'll be back when this all gets melted. Okay, our butter's melting. We're getting there, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like right now. And we're still just a stirring. So when we get it to a bubble, we'll be back. All right, now we've got our pan of boiling. We've got our bubbles coming up now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my burner and I'm gonna put it, here's my high, here's my low. It's just a little bit closer to the high. This is medium right here. So it's just a little bit between medium and high, but more on the medium side. Got my timer set for five minutes and we're gonna start our timer. We're gonna stir this constantly. So you just want to keep stirring it, keep stirring it, and let it boil for five minutes. That's all you need to do, just boil it for five minutes. All right, we're about two minutes in. We've got three minutes left to go. And like I said, you've got to keep stirring. Make sure that you keep stirring this. You don't want to stop stirring it. You don't want anything sticking to the bottom. And if you see the little brown specks come up, that's okay. That's normal. That's just a part of the caramelization. That's what's going on when we're doing this fudge. So don't be alarmed by that when you see that. So we've got two minutes and 40 seconds left to go. I'm going to keep sitting here stirring and we'll be back. Okay, we've got about 20 seconds left of this. As you can see, it's reduced some. The consistency has gotten thicker. So as soon as my timer goes off, I'm going to immediately take it over, take it off the heat. And we're going to get all of our other ingredients added in and you need to be quick about it. So follow me and you'll be just fine. All right, I'm going to get my marshmallow cream in. This is the hardest thing. So if you have somebody that can help you, normally the chef helps me, but he's holding the camera right now. So make sure you get all of your marshmallow cream in. every single little bit this is helps it make it so creamy and so flavorful all right i think we're good there got our marshmallow cream in now we're going to move to our peanut butter like I said, four heaping tablespoons of peanut butter. There goes one, two, 
three, and one more, four, four heaping tablespoons of peanut butter, and we want one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I usually use the cap for my measurements. So in goes our vanilla, and the rest is just stir elbow grease. We need to be quick about it and get this all stirred in here and get it all melted before our fudge starts to set up. And this will have, you will have some of the best fudge you've ever had in your life and it will be worth the time and effort that you put into it and your family, family will be so thankful. It's really creamy. And you'll be so happy and so proud of yourself for making some delicious fudge. So I'm gonna get this stirred up and we'll be back. You're on. Okay, here we go. It's time to pour our fudge into our pan. Make sure we get it spread to all corners. If you see stripes of marshmallow cream, that's okay. We want that extra collar in there. So get this all down in there. Get it all spread out. All spread out. And this is some creamy, delicious fudge. All right. Gonna leave a little bit in the panda. You have to taste your work, you know. But it sets up. See, it's setting up already. That's what we want. So as soon as this has a chance to cool, we're gonna cut it and we'll be back. Okay, we're back now and our fudge is set up. So we're gonna pull it out of our pan and set it back down and pull our paper away. And we're going to do the same thing we did with our other fudge with my trusty pizza cutter. We're going to go down and we're going to make some cuts into our fudge. Just going to make a few this way. And then we'll turn it. And we'll make a few this way. Smells so good. You can smell that peanut butter for sure. All right. And we're just going to take our trusty old spatula. Come in here. Sometimes your outer pieces may break and that's okay. But if you can see that fudge, it's nice and creamy. Nice and soft. That's what you want for a good fudge right there. So we're going to get this cut and plate it up and we'll be back. Okay, everybody, there you have it. Our nice and creamy fudge all set up. You can see the texture. So smooth and moist. Wonderful fudge. And whoever wins the contest, which we'll be drawing for that in the video for tomorrow. So make sure you stay tuned. So whoever wins that contest will also be receiving some of this fudge that we made during this video. So, I hope you guys are having a great day, night, I should say now. I hope your week is going great. We will be back tomorrow with our drawing. And anything, Chef? Mm -hmm. Hope you guys have a wonderful night. Happy Vlogmas!